Everybody is talking about the new M2 MacBook Air thermal throttling, but of course we expected that and we knew it because we found that even the Pro thermal throttled under heavy load and that one has a fan. But what's different about this video is that we are gonna find out just how hot it gets. We're gonna look at the actual temperatures, how long it takes to get severe thermal throttling, what the frequencies are doing, and is there any cap? Is the actual CPU slower than the version in the Pro? And with that, does this thermal throttling issue really matter that much? Should you actually worry about it? Well, let's go ahead and find out. This right here is the base model that a lot of people are gonna buy. It does have eight gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of SSD, and the eight core GPU. Right out of the gate, we're idling at about 34, 35 Celsius. Now, this is the MacBook that we did do a full teardown on. We're super careful with it. We reapplied thermal paste that performs the same as Apple's. And we did get a note from an engineer saying that the whole metal cover likely isn't a vapor chamber, but more of a metal shielding with a sticker there because these modern electronics are a lot more sensitive than they used to be when they're packed with so many different chips. With that, I have to tell you about our giveaway because we are giving away one of these brand new M2 MacBook Airs and I don't care where you are in the world. I will pay for the shipping and I will pay for the import duties or taxes. All you have to do is one, be subscribed and two, comment below on each one of our launch week videos. Each time you comment on a video that gives you an extra entry to win. And on Monday, July 25th, we will be randomly selecting a video on camera. So make sure you guys check out that video as well. And before we start testing, let's grab our thermal camera and get a baseline of the temperatures. Now take a look at that. This thing is running pretty dang cool. The hottest spot is actually on the display at 33 degrees Celsius. And the whole base now is just showing a nice cool blue. So it is very cool at idle. Now the first thing that I wanna test is to see if there is any cap on the wattage or the frequency with this fanless design. So I'm gonna be running Geekbench 5 and I'm gonna be taking a look at the CPU frequency here as well as the peak wattage. Now the highest that I saw with the M2 MacBook Pro was 3,316 megahertz and 23.78 watts. So far, it is hitting over 3,300 megahertz, so Apple did not cap it, thankfully. And as far as the wattage, we just hit 24.6 watts, basically within margin of error or difference with the M2 MacBook Pro. And the scores also look fantastic matching up with the MacBook Pro. So if you do short bursty tasks like most people do, uh, you are not gonna have any issue, don't be worried. But with that said, what if you do wanna do some gaming, some 3D rendering, you say Xcode, Photoshop, stuff that keeps a bigger, longer load on the CPU and GPU. And now let's put that full 100% CPU load on with Cinebench. Now I'm gonna start our multi-core run, just a single run right here, to see what performance we get for just a short render without that throttling test. And before we look at the frequencies, because that does use a little bit of the CPU to run that program. Now, right out of the gate, we're at 95 degrees Celsius right away, 99. It's been what, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds? We're at 101. 103 right there. I should probably just wait till it caps. 104, 107. All right, it should stick. 108 right there. Now, people said that we were freaking out about it hitting 108 with the MacBook Pro because we were doing some heavy 8K rendering, but it looks like we're getting the same exact temperature. Now, it hit that in what, like half the run. So this just proves that this is the target temperature that Apple is capping at. It used to be 95 degrees Celsius with the Intel Max, and then some of them would hit 100 like the M1s. Now 108 is what Apple is comfortable for that ceiling, and that is above boiling temperature. That's crazy. All right, we have our score, and it is 
8,551 compared to our M2 MacBook Pro that scored 8,697. That is a difference of only 1.7%, which is a lot less than I expected after we saw how fast it heated up and how hot it got. So for those of you out there that are gonna be typing comments saying, you did a teardown in this machine, you can't test it, you're messing up the thermals. Well, look at that, that is actually pretty impressive and it shows that everything's working properly. But with that said, let's see what happens when we have an extended load and what happens with the frequencies in our wattage. I'm gonna start doing a single run right here and let's take a look at what we get. Right at the gate, we're running at 3.204 megahertz, which is just like the M2 MacBook Pro, and we hit a peak wattage of 22.4. We're now at 103 degrees Celsius. The CPU is still running at full blast. All right, it's slowing down a little bit more now. We're almost at three gigahertz. The wattage is dropping uh, down just under 18. So we got 8,357 for that run right there. So slower than the previous run. And I started it up right away. So we have a consistent load. And now we're running just under three gigahertz, running at about 16 and a half watts now. Halfway through that second run, it dropped down to 2.6 gigahertz. The wattage dropped down a as well in order to cool itself down. It didn't want to stay at 108. Bam, 7,891 for our second run. That's dropping quick. Wow, it's running at 2.2 gigahertz now and only nine watts. All right, guys, we are on our fifth run and it looks like the MacBook just changed something up. Instead of cooling down quickly and ramping up all the way, now it is choosing to run cooler by lowering the clock speed consistently. We're running at 2.5 gigahertz at about 10 watts or so which is actually pretty impressive. It's a low wattage for that frequency. Uh, and we're running at about 95 degrees Celsius, 94 now. So it looks like Apple will not let it run indefinitely at 108, which is why some people are getting uh, not that great performance doing longer renders and comparing it to even the M1 MacBook Pro, which we will be doing soon. 7330. Wow, all right, so that was our sixth run, and that is already slower than the M1 MacBook Air doing its first run, which that also does uh, slow down, but I don't think as much as this one. 7295, it keeps getting slower and slower, so I have to keep testing it. 7302, that is our last run. So it looks like the M2 MacBook Air loses up to 17% of its CPU performance after it settles in. And it started out at 3.2 gigahertz and then ended up at 2.65 once it was heat soaked and started running cooler, but slower. So yes, this does throttle more and it ends up being slower than the M1 chip with proper cooling like in the MacBook Pro. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the temperatures. Now that we've been running this for a while, it looks like we're at 46, 47 degrees Celsius. That is pretty dang hot, hotter than most laptops that we've seen. It is starting to cool down a little bit here. Uh, and most of the temperatures right there, it's right where the M2 chip is. We're not getting too much heat transfer. Um, and that might also show that that whole metal shield, just like the engineer said, is not a vapor chamber system because then it'd be more even across, but that is just more shielding. Now there is actually one benefit with this. You guys saw that the score dropped by 17%, but our power usage dropped by more than half. So that trade-off is actually pretty impressive, meaning that your MacBook Air, after it's gone through its hot phase, will run cooler than the MacBook Pro. Yes, it will have less performance, but it's also gonna use less than half the wattage for the CPU, meaning that helps out with battery life if you're pushing your machine. Now, if you wanna see us mod this MacBook Air and add some thermal pads to transfer that heat and to see if we can 
fix or greatly improve this thermal issue, make sure you guys click that subscribe button below and that notification bell because we're gonna be testing out that video and it made a big difference with the M1 MacBook Air. And now let's go ahead and talk about the graphics. Now, some people have tested the 10 core graphics, but this is the eight core with the base model. Let's see how much this new thinner profile affects the thermal performance. Let's go ahead and start our 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme stress test. This is gonna run for 20 minutes. It's gonna put a full load on the GPU, just like if you're rendering and using the graphics or you're gaming. Right out of the gate, we are running at about 10 and a half watts at almost 1400 megahertz for the graphics. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any software yet that can read the GPU temperatures. The closest thing we have is our CPU, and that is, of course, on the same chip. It's not as hot, and it is starting to heat up after we've been running this for a few loops. And it looks like after four minutes, we are getting some slowdowns uh, for the GPU, now running at about 1,334 megahertz and is going a little bit lower as well. So I presume now the graphics is over 100 degrees. And at the fifth run, we're nearing 1,000 megahertz now. And that is quite disappointing. I was hoping the eight core would fare better and wouldn't throttle much, but it looks like it definitely does. So this is, just has me thinking, if the eight core is throttling this much, what about the 10 core? We might end up with very similar performance just because of heat. Now we will be doing a comparison to the highest spec M2 MacBook Air as well with 16 gigs, 512 and the 10 core GPU. So you guys can look forward to that video. We just hit 990 megahertz, 989 right there. So it looks like after about 10 or so minutes, it starts slowing down even more. We're using less than half the power that it did initially. Uh, as far as the actual temperatures, we're not sure, but they did definitely drop from about 90, 92 in the CPU to about 75. So once again, after about that 10 minute mark or so, the MacBook decides, hey, let's just get slow as long as we can cool down. Now, part of that could be, uh, like I mentioned, about it just getting too hot on the bottom for comfort. There are legal limits. I believe it's about 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, right now we're looking at about 43. I did check about two minutes ago before it started slowing down under a thousand megahertz and it was 47. So it was getting dangerously close to the legal limit for surface temperature, which is why it's probably slowing down this much. So we're almost done with the last run. So it's been pretty much 20 minutes and it looks like the graphics settles in at about 900 and 50 megahertz and about five watts or so. So that is pretty low. Now here we see all of their runs. We start out pretty strong with a score of 5,611. And the few first few runs, you're kind of just losing a little bit of performance, not drastic. And then when we get to the fourth run is when it starts taking a dive. And that pretty much shows that our system, even though we took it apart, the heat spreader, the thermal paste, everything's working properly until it gets saturated and it just falls off a cliff there. After that massive dive, it does recover just a little bit, but then slowly starts tapering down and it just continues that trend. So it looks like you can only rely on getting the full graphics performance for about four minutes, which are these first runs, and then it gets drastically lower. Our stability score ended up being 73.8%, meaning that we got a 26.2% loss in graphics performance, and this is only the eight core model. That makes me even more interested to compare it to the 10 core as well as the M1 MacBook Air's graphics. So now to answer the question we had at the start, should you worry about this? Does it really matter? Should people be freaking out? Well, what we found in our testing is that if you're doing a CPU based task that really hammers the CPU and it is a task that is quicker than 10 minutes or so, especially in the first five minutes, you won't get too much slowing down. After about the 10 minute mark is where it decides to really slow down to cool itself down. And as far as the graphics, if you're hammering the graphics, for example, gaming or rendering with graphics, uh, then as long as it's quicker than five minutes, 
it's also not that terrible of a performance. Uh, but if you're doing tasks that are longer than that, then you'll benefit greatly from the MacBook Pro. And with that, keep in mind that these are tasks that are exclusive. If you're doing something that uses both, for example, video editing with tougher footage that maxes it out, or maybe 3D rendering both with CPU and graphics combined, or other tasks, that time is gonna get cut down drastically. My guess is about two or three minutes until it's saturated because you're hammering both of those at the same time. And we'll test some of that in our MacBook comparisons. You guys let me know your thoughts down below. Did you think you're gonna get this much throttling, about 17% for the CPU, and then about 26% for the graphics? We wanna hear your guys' opinions. Click that circle above if you wanna see more videos like this one. Make sure you comment down below for a chance to win. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.